What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode of Unrest from Pyrodactyl Studios, this fun little story based game. We took a chance on it and I found that actually the Nerd Castle liked this game quite a bit more than I expected them to and so thank you to all of you for letting me know how you feel about this game. In the previous episode we had taken control of Shyam, who if you know how the factions work, so we'll go over that one more time, you've got J-Deep. J-Deep is the guy who is essentially running the militia outside the gates. You've got Shyam, who is running the military inside the gates. He's a mercenary force, and so we're taking control of him right now to see how the story plays out from his direction, or from his directive, or from his perspective, I guess would be the most appropriate way for me to put it down. We've got a dead Naga over here. Let's see what's going on. Uh, greetings, sir. Did we already talk to these guys? We went into one of the homes, just checking on the perimeter squats, and we saw this Naga bastard go for a weapon. You should have seen us, sir. We brought him down with the poles just like in training. And kept the body. I assume there's a reason for that? Yeah, well, some of us were thinking, well, sir, we hear you can sell the liver for a bit of cash to some of these rich folk. And we can say that's probably a bad idea. The Naga might get you back for it. Get rid of the body now. I hear you sold part of it, and I'll beat you myself. Or we can say that's a disgusting bit of money grabbing, but I like it. Yeah, let the, let the soldiers have their fun. That's the most disgusting bit of money grabbing I've ever heard, and I like it. Hey, the Naga were supposed to make Bimra rich, right? It's about time they came through on that. God, that's horrible. I feel bad now. Oh, well. I like the way there's, like, little details, like his pendant swings when he walks. Just, like, random stuff. Now, the final thing that we needed to do, in the previous episode, we had talked to one of our inferiors, I guess. Or not one of our inferiors. No, that's what it was. We had talked to one of J. Deep's men about the payment of our soldiers, and he had said something along the lines that he can't, he can't guarantee that we'll get paid unless I follow all of the orders that I'm giving to the T, and that, like, all of my men stay inside the walls, which, of course, gives J. Deep's men the opportunity to go out and exterminate the Naga. This becomes kind of an issue because... We were given oversight by... what was his name? I forget the name. Let's go ahead. It's been a little while. It's been about a week since I recorded last for this, so I am trying to keep things straight. Let's see here. Not Vijay, that's the uncle, Ronvir. There we go. Ronvir is the guy that I'm thinking about. So Ronvir had given us express orders, or explicit orders, to stay inside the walls when we were defending so that JD's men could go out and exterminate all of the Naga. Now, we had wanted oversight because there's Rhea who is the Naga ambassador who is trying to look out for her people and so we had agreed to come to terms somewhere in the middle where we would have oversight over JB's men at least slightly to make sure this whole thing didn't turn into a slaughter but what are you gonna do I've got a very very extreme feeling that this whole thing is gonna turn out somewhat nasty and there's not gonna be a whole lot that we could do about it the last thing that we need to do before we go anywhere else is we need to find ourselves a sergeant and so we need to elect somebody to be our I guess man on the front lines to handle all the orders and everything like that and so what we're gonna briefly do is we're gonna have interviews with some of these guys and then we're gonna choose who's going to be the best commanding officer for our units and so we're gonna start with Sanjay just say the word sir I mentioned to get out there and give the men what they need I'm in a hurry you tell me why you deserve this position if these men are gonna be out there ducking knives Naga and naughty language the least they can ask for is an officer that they trust ask any of these people who they want to be in command they know I'm smart and I'm loyal and they know that I won't get them killed over something stupid And if they could say that about any of these other candidates I tell you to pick one of them as it is I'm the only soldier these boys actually want to report to but hey it's your call so what do you think let's see here we can say that we found our sergeant, obviously. We can say, I'll let you know when I've thought about it for now, get back to work. Or, if you could promise me that you'll follow my orders, whatever my own reservations are, I'll take you. Alright, well, I'm just going to go with the middle one, because I want to talk to everybody first. Why are we, look, we're pitching in tents and keeping supplies on the roof. That doesn't seem to be directly accessible by any means. You'd be like, where'd you put the supplies? Oh, they're up on the roof. So, you just put all, we're down here on the ground. I don't know if you realize that, but we're on the ground. The supplies should be on the ground with us, right? Maybe I don't know how to do military planning. Bupendra. Stupendous Bupendra. Sir, I'm exactly what this city needs, sir. I can promise you that. Make me your sergeant and I'll protect this city better than any man ever could. Let's see here. I only want to know one thing from you. Why do you think that you should be sergeant? I've been out on the defensive line many times, sir. I've heard my men talk. They're all very loyal, but as a whole, they lack empathy. They need a commanding officer who can show them the right thing to do, whether they like it or not. And I'm that man. What do you think, sir? Alright, well, we'll talk to somebody else now. Rajesh. I've spent enough time on a squad. Right now, I'm the most qualified candidate for sergeant you, for a sergeant that you have. 
Let's see here, tell me why I don't make my decision. Partially, it's because I'm smarter than the other candidates. Mostly, it's because I'm more careful. My Heat wasn't a bad person and the men liked him, but I never once saw him burden himself with a decision for longer than a few seconds. The same goes for my comrades. I could be decisive without being reckless, and that, above all else, is really what you need. So? I'll think about it. And so essentially, we've got this guy down here who's respected by the men. We have this guy right here who's empathetic. And we have this guy right here who is decisive. And so that's really, we've got to decide whether we want somebody who reacts quickly to situations. We want somebody that sits, like, sits and thinks through a situation. Or whether we want somebody who the troops will follow his orders no matter what because they respect him. And that's a tough call. All three of those values are something that we should really care about as a commanding officer. Those are all three things. Presumably, we would want somebody who had all of those qualities but unfortunately that's not the case we've got them divided up into these three distinct personalities I think I'm gonna go for the person who empathy's fine but I think I'm probably gonna go with let's go with the most cunning individual you're my man. Good, I'll get ready. Thank you, sir. So we went with the cunning individual because I value somebody that has a lot of smarts and who I don't have to babysit. I would value somebody who can think through a situation. I can give them like a vague order. They can think through the situation and handle it on their own. I need somebody to be, to call back to like Ender's Game. I need somebody to be my like Bean, you know what I mean? That's what Bean was in that storyline. Like he wasn't necessarily, nobody respected him and so forth, but he was so smart that you could give him the vaguest of orders and he would figure out something to do with it and bring it back with just the perfect result that you could want. Let's see what's going on down here. The Naga regards you silently. Either it cannot or will not respond. Kill us or don't. Either way, the Queen is coming for you. He had it coming. Believe me, he had it coming. We got gangers. What's going on down here? This was the assassin that killed the king that was in the courtyard. They said we should talk to him. Shyam, it's nice to see a familiar face. Maybe not so much yours. Is that, sir? The men are saying he's the one that... Yeah, I know. We can say to cut his throat. We can say turn him loose. We don't have time to handle this. To have why did this happen now? Go store him somewhere safe. Or we can say leave us. I'd like to speak with him myself. I think we'll say leave us. I'll speak to him on my own. No offense, but I kind of hoped I'd never have to see you again. Especially since Vijay ordered his men to kill me right after I... Well, you know. I'll be honest. There's a lot about that day that I don't understand. Yeah, probably Vijay was the only man with all the answers. And we know that. Or we know that, well... And we killed a group of innocent people because he said it would make Bimra better, you know. I don't know about you, but I'd like to go to my death knowing a little bit more about the worst thing I've ever done. Okay, well, let's trade. I'll ask you a question, and then you ask me a question. All right, you're a go. Why did Vijay pick you? Why not someone else? Well, thanks to him, I was the court spy. It meant that I was close enough to attack them on the day. But just in case things went wrong, he had deniability. That's my guess, anyways. Maybe he just didn't want to get his own hands dirty. So why did you let it happen? What did Vijay tell you? Said the assassination would pacify the slums. Said the royals had it coming. The Naga were their fault. Basically blame it on the royals. He said that I'd be in charge of law and order in the city. And I couldn't stand watching the guards fumble about. Vijay offered me money and power in exchange for looking the other way. It's, I'm a mercenary. That's the most likely one. I'm a mercenary. He was paying me and that's not much of a question. Fair enough. That's the one that I go with. If I was a mercenary, the guy paying the bills gets to make all the orders. And you sit there and you take the money and you take the orders. I mean, that's that. That's the life of a mercenary. I wouldn't expect a mercenary to have too many more motives other than that. I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, he has to do what he's told, so why have a whole bunch of extra motives? When did Vijay start planning the assassination? He only told me the day before. I don't even know. He didn't give me much notice either. I worked for him for a while, and he sprang it on me at the last minute. I guess the idea was that if he didn't tell his allies, they wouldn't have time to panic or betray him or second-guess things, but he definitely wanted us involved. I know that much. It meant we were complicit. It meant that we'd stay loyal. Do you regret, you know, that you were part of it? That we killed him? Let's see here. We have varying degrees of no. We have varying degrees of yes. Yeah, I don't... It seems as though Shyam, based on the way that the storyline has gone with Shyam as a passive character, it seems like he's sort of having doubts about the way that the Naga are being treated, so... Yeah, I don't like the people who have taken control since. That's fair. Some days I feel the exact same way. Then other days, well... Other days, I just don't know. Your turn. Who else knew? Did Ronvir? Laxmi? I don't know about Ronvir, but Laxmi did. And she either knew of or figured out that JD would try and kill me afterwards. Her men grabbed me right after the assassination. She's been having me rat out the traitors on her farm. Believe me, it hasn't been fun. Here's a nasty question. Do you think we're going to make it out of this? Bimra, I mean? Nope, honestly, I think this city's doomed. Yep. 
Your turn. I mean, I'm just going based on the way that I've seen things unfold, like in the third world and things like that. It's just like whenever one of these situations happens where you have this civil war going on, it never seems to work out for anyone. It just seems like it's a mass slaughter, and so I really do feel like Bimra is probably going to crumble under the own weight of its soldier's boots. So your turn. What are you doing here? Honestly, what really keeps me up at night is worrying that I killed the king and queen for go no good reason. That the peace we'd won was temporary and Bimra would collapse anyways. I guess when I heard the riots were spreading, I had to see for myself. What's your goal been lately? Trying to keep this place from falling apart and that's about it. Your turn. What was your incentive? Why was he paying you? I was paid, but honestly I just wanted the riots to stop. But Jay made me believe that I and only I could restore some peace to the city. Wouldn't you bend your moral standards a little bit? No, I wouldn't. Not on Vijay's say so. If you could wish death on one person right now, who would it be? If Vijay is the uncle, we could say Rhea. Although Rhea is unlikely, I don't see that being a good call. Killing the ambassador seems kind of ineffectual. It'll make the Naga angry, but what are they going to do? I mean, they've got their own problems with refugees. Ronvir. The killing it might make the slungs worse. Kanika, the last we need are rabble rousers. I hate Kanika, so there's that. Her shiva bitch tactics are not acceptable. Killing innocent people to get the job done is never okay. And as much as you all in the last episode said that superiors are not responsible for their inferiors, they are. A superior is directly responsible. Anything, if you're under my command and you do something that is horrific, I am now responsible because you're underneath me. That means I enabled you to do that. Forgive me for a moment, I had to reach down and pick something up off the floor that I dropped. But I, I really dislike Kanika. Anybody that runs a racket like she runs, she's going to be a liability too. That's the thing, is in the long run, she will be a liability to the legitimacy of the Queen. If people find out that the Queen has had people running around shiving people, even though the Queen didn't know about it, or it even gives the impression that the Queen has had people running around assassinating random, you know, priests and monks and innocent people, fathers and children and daughters and things like that, it's not going to help. It's going to make things worse. You have to run operations like this as cleanly as possible, with as much plausible deniability as possible, otherwise you're going to find yourself on the bad end of a lynch mob. I'm going to go with J. Deep. Yeah, seriously, like the slums didn't have enough problems. I think J. Deep is the one person making things worse right now. Like, he knows the slums, but he's kind of running like this weird, like, Ku Klux Klan force right now that's just, like, killing anybody they see fit. So, I mean, the blatant racism that's going on in the slums against the Naga and things like that, I think J. Deep is definitely... First and foremost, he's a lackey. He takes orders, he laps it up, and he does whatever he's told, no matter how horrible it is, and that in and of itself is pretty terrible. But he seems to just kind of be that guy who's out there to kill the Naga in the first place. Your turn. Well, that's really all I wanted to know. Of course, this is all ultimately pointless. We're only ever going to have a couple complex or a couple different perspectives on this whole mess, and you really have to understand every side of it to fix it. That's why Vijay is always going to end up ruling this place. Vijay rules nothing. Laxmi controls the farms, Ron Veer controls the slums, and I control the muscle. And all of you are on the council because you run those things just the way that Vijay likes it. Laxmi's a stern taskmistress, so she gives all of her farms, so he gives her all the farms to police. Ron Veer keeps the slums peaceful right up until he stabs them straight down the Naga's throats, which is exactly what Vijay wants to happen. Rhea's a coward and a pacifist and unwilling to start a war with Bimra, and you, honestly, I don't know about you. I'm pretty sure that if you start causing trouble, Vijay will find a way to give you the boot. Vijay wouldn't. I was complicit as a royal assassination. I'm too risky as an enemy. Let's get to the point. You've got a lot of priorities right now. By nobody's esp estimation, I'm one of them. I'm harmless. I perform enough assassinations for one lifetime, and I frankly approve of Vijay being in power, even though he tried to have me killed. So please just let me go so I can get out of the city for good. Nah, I might need you as a bargaining chip against Vijay. You can wait in chains. Yeah, somehow I knew that was coming. This guy is... I mean, we need him. He's kind of a big deal. Technically, we're not a citizen of Bimra, we're just a mercenary, so ultimately, when we get tried at the end of this war, let's assume that we get captured or anything like that, or if anything goes wrong, we're just a mercenary at the end of the day. We were paid, we follow orders, and we're just hired muscle. This guy right here is a first-hand witness that we can use against the other people as a snitch, essentially, to bargain ourselves into a better position. So, all things to think about when you're trying to make yourself a little bit more comfortable when things fall apart. Oh, we were just talking, sir. It's nothing you need to... And then swapped over to a frustrated soldier. Captain, we don't really have to lay down our lives for useless starving street trash, do we? They want to kill each other? Then what's the point in getting ourselves cut open trying to stop them? I don't know. What's the point in paying a merc who can't take orders? 
orders, but you haven't given me any. Turn in your arm. Uh, we can tell him to turn in his arms and then he's finished. If you're scared of getting hurt, you'll wait for them and follow them. To the word. No, sir, I'll fight, but... But what? Come on, out with it. Sir, I joined Bimmer's... I joined you because Bimmer's right for an invasion. I thought for sure one of these days an army was going to come over the hill, and this would be my chance to defend it. I'm not soldier-born. The army wouldn't have me, but I wanted to do some good in the city is all. I wouldn't mind dying with a spear in my gut, but who wants to get killed by a spade to the skull defending scabby beggars from another scabby beggar? The slums are, Bimmer. Well, I don't know if we truly believe that right now. It's like... It's like J Deep and all of them said in the previous episode. It's like Ron Veer said, anyways. Everybody is so keen to include the slums as part of Bimrot until they actually have to do something for the slums, and then they're keen to pass off the slums as not being part of Bimrot. It seems like everybody's of two minds about the slums. Let's see here. We can say that it's not about. Alright, sir. When you put it like that, I guess I can see it. Thank you, sir. Disgruntled veteran. Shyam, what are we still doing here? You weren't born to run cities. You were born to take them. Let them fall down around some other bastard's ears. Come on. What's wrong with you? Wow, this guy. I don't, I'm going to assume that since he's a veteran, we may have known him from a long time before, but that's no way to talk to a superior officer. That's that's risky talk right there. End up with yourself in the stockade. We could threaten him. We can say that he's drunken to get him out of our sight. And what's it to you? You're paid either way. And what's it to you? You get paid either way. How long are you going to keep taking Bimra's money, Shyam? Until the riots kill everybody or until the famine does? Until the Nog invasion kills us? Why don't we get out now and find somewhere else? Or better yet, why don't we take our payment right now out of Bimra's scrawny fingers? Well, we'll go with, I'm going to try and take their money until Bimra is right again. Then we'll be rewarded in full. I haven't seen one sign that this city is going to get any better. Even the monsoons aren't going to bring enough food to feed the slums. Not for a long time. So what do you really think is going to happen? Well, we can say that we don't have to explain ourselves. That's honestly the real answer right there. A superior officer is by no means expected to explain himself to a private or a corporal or anything like that. Their job is to follow orders. Ours is but to do and die and so forth. But at the same time, I'm kind of intrigued by the offer of engaging with this guy in dialogue. So whatever. Things aren't as bad as you think. Bimra is a bold city. Recovery is inevitable. That's it? That's what you think is going to happen? Even if that comes true, the council is going to cut us loose the second they don't need us. Well, we started this, and I plan to finish it. Yeah, you think about what I said when the slum rats come out to gnaw the flesh off your bones. You remember somebody had the guts to talk sense to you. Wow. Alright, well, let's go back, and I think we're supposed to give orders right about now. Or something. We'll go have a look. I don't know who we're supposed to be giving orders to, but eventually I think we can call everybody together and say to assemble the army. Maybe out here by the door? Shyam, I appear before you humbly. I'm a noble, a landowner, a proud father, and a friend of any servant of the city. I have come to ask you to commit your troops to defending the Naga of the slums. Alright, I'm listening. I've had my eyes opened. I'm selfish to hoard my own safety, so long kept at the expense of others, and further endanger the Naga of the slums. My human and Naga allies in the Brotherhood of Friendship are one of mine. If ever we are to show that we humans are a caring and merciful people, now is the time to do it. I'll remember what you've said. Then go to your work. Just remember whatever you choose that future generations are watching. I've assembled the men at the mouth of the slums of you ordered, sir. Are you ready to set out? Let's put an end to this. Yes, sir. Alright, Sergeant. We sent three squads. Didn't we have seven squads or something like that? I can't remember. Ready to move them out, sir? Ain't ready yet. Let's hold on. My squad is prepped and ready. Just give the word, okay? So I think we had seven squads, as I recall. Or like five of seven or something like that. I'm hoping that they quantify it one more time for me so that I can remember properly. I think this is our guy. Alright, gather them around. Let's get this over with. Men, form up. The men gather. Some mutter, some chuckle. Others stare gravely ahead. They've been on their feet for a while now, and it shows. Say, what a city to die for, eh, boys? You can say, this is going to be the easiest job in history. Today's a good day. Today we get to do the right thing. Let's skip the speech. Let's try and appeal to the moral, I guess. What a city to die for is sort of the humorous thing to talk about, but today's a good day, boys. We get to do the right thing. The men look at each other. That wasn't what they were expecting. 
It's sometimes hard to know what to do in this city. Well, today I know. They're listening. Vijay was going to cut your pay, and I made sure that that wouldn't happen. The men seem at ease. Doubtless they'd heard rumors that you've now dismissed. So we can say that half go into the squad, or half go into the slums, the rest stay on the line. We can say a couple squads go into the slums, rest holds the line. Or we can have everybody stay on the defensive lines. And so if you're not sure what the outcomes are going to be to this, I'm not sure either. I... I'm not sure how things vary based on how many soldiers you choose, but essentially the outcomes that we're looking at is that if we keep everybody on the defensive line, we may throw back the Queen's troops, maybe? If we take people out into the slums, we protect the Naga. I think I'm going to send a few squads out into the slums, everyone else holds the line. The defensive party looking tangibly relieved stands at attention. Let's see here. So we're talking to the defensive party. So these are the people that are holding the line. We can tell them they're here to contain everything. You are a wall. You understand me? Or we could say, JD's boys go through plus refugees and we'll sort them out. You're only here to keep back rioters. Don't hurt anyone that's not asking for it. Contain everything. We'll follow orders. You're a human wall. The men nod, absorbing their instruction. Let's see here. We could say to follow the temples, we could say to protect everyone, we can say to keep the merchants safe, or we can say to concentrate around the council. Let's go ahead and we'll concentrate around the council, they're the ones paying. The slum party stirs, awaiting instructions, they don't look happy about this. While in there, keep the peace, you hear muttering. It's the right thing to do, boys, trust me. Several men were waiting to hear this. After stages of dissatisfaction and last goodbyes, half a dozen men throw down their weapons and walk away. Well, what are the rest of you waiting for? Get to it. Gradually, with many a glance back at you, the men move out to who knows what fate. Okay, so here we are. I suppose that it'll probably give us... A little bit of a recap of what's happened with the battle. I don't know how much time has passed right here. If it's several hours later, several minutes later, right after the move out, I'm not really sure. Sergeant? I couldn't get too close, sir, but it looked more like a hundred small riots than the big one. Some of the far streets are mad, and the priests never make it out that far. Some of the nearest swarmed by gangs of thieves finally having it out with each other. Then there's the Naga thugs, drunk loyalists, and neighbors killing each other over who knows what. That's about as much sense as I could make of it, sir. Okay. Give it to me honestly. How do you and the boys feel about all this? Want to get stuck in? Honestly, sir, none of us know the slums. None of us know anybody from the slums. Nobody cares about the slums. We're getting paid to walk the defensive line, and that sounds fine by us. People want to come up to our formations. We'll take care of them. But wandering around out there behind all those blind alleys, and for what? I don't think there's a man here who sees any profit in it, sir, and that's the truth. Shyam, Laxmi has requested you return to the council chamber. She says it's an urgent tactical matter. On my way. Now head in there and see if anyone else needs you. Very good, sir. Follow me. Bless the gods for secret passages. Oh, what's wrong, Shyam? Did someone buy out your messenger? Believe me, I know your pain. So that's going to be the uncle of the queen. Should have figured something was wrong. He was a mercenary. This is what comes of entrusting the city's safety to mercenaries and mercenary captains. Draw your sword and cast it to your right. I want to hear it clatter, then put your hands out and let my people shackle you. What happened to our soldiers? Like, did all of our soldiers get bought out? I'm not sure what happened here. Like, I need a little bit more explanation. We've got a plot hole the size of the Grand Canyon. Like, what happened in the battle? Won't I know you? Not personally, nor will you. Throw your sword aside. I'm not a big surrendering person. I don't like being threatened. You won't be kept prisoner for long. The rightful queen will be here soon to pass judgment. As you're jostled along, unarmed and barely on your feet, you can hear the city breaking down behind you. You have no idea whether anything you tried tonight worked. You have no idea if you'll live to find out. Alright, I'm a little bit confused about everything. More and more as I play this game, I'm kind of learning that I hate all the factions, including Asha. I dislike everybody. I just don't like any of the factions. I hate every single one of them, and I kind of wish they would all just fall in on each other. Sounds like a horrible thing to say, but it's just, they all suck. They're all just such opportunistic bastards and killers and murderers and all that, that it's just like, 
What do you even do in this case? There is no right person to pick. Everybody is just a huge piece of shit. Let's have a walk around and we'll see if we can find anything to do. Although we are coming to a close in this episode. Traits. Queen to B. It's Asha's right and responsibility to rule Bimra justly. I'm not sure how they over... How did a bunch of rabble overwhelm the defensive line? That's the thing that they haven't explained yet at all. I mean, I would have expected a brief little cutscene or just a splash text or something telling us what happened. It looks like they took the cat. I mean, everybody here appears to be one of the peasant soldiers. Laxmi's still here. Yes, I knew about your parents' assassination. I didn't have them killed and I didn't want them dead, but I profited from it. So where does that leave us? I doubt it's anywhere good. How did you know then, and why didn't you try and stop it? All I ever really wanted was to have as much of a stake in things as Vijay did, as my husband used to. I was bored, and so I lingered around a few doors, chatted with a few wives, and thought in on the bigger picture, and when the time came, I acted quietly and plucked up power like an old garment. Vijay was impressed not only that I probably knew the assassination was going to happen, but that I had taken control of my husband's land so quickly after his death. He offered me a role on the council. Amazing how many roads complete social upheaval builds. Amazing, also, how no one has thought to ask me this question before. I'm not asking you to be sympathetic, but I'm not going to beg, either. Everyone knows on the streets that I had a hand in killing your parents. Keeping me around just sends the wrong kind of message, so do what you have to do and stop wasting both of our time. Don't worry, I will. I'm ready to lay down your sentence. If someone killed my family, I mean, that's that. Y'all gonna die. I think that's pretty much the way that's gonna go down. I'd be having heads on pikes, I'd be having guts all over the kingdom, we'd be drawn and quartering fools left and right if it came to my family, so... That's that. I sentence you... No, we're going to be executing. I sentence you to execution, to the guards sooner rather than later. She stares at you stone-faced as the verdict passes. There's nothing more to say. Everybody who's complicit in the death of my family be getting it. So the throne's all but retaken. I suppose that's the hard part done, isn't it? After this, nothing can stop me from reclaiming my throne. And we're all looking forward to that, aren't we? I imagine you'll soon have this city straightened out. Yes, good luck in there, Asha. Go give Vijay what he deserves. I think for now... I'm going to break the episode off right here, and we'll save some of the other politicking for later and some of the sentencing. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for another episode of Unrest, a fantastically little tense, I mean anxious game by Pyridactyl. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and I do.